So this greenhouse kit, which had a sticker price of $3,300, cost me over $8,000 when I was all said and done. Hey, I'm Nadia, and I am going to break down the exact price that I paid for this greenhouse. Because the price of the kit, the price of the greenhouse kit itself, was not the price that I ended up paying for this entire greenhouse once you factor in all the other pretty hidden costs that come with buying a greenhouse. So I'm going to break all that down for you in this video. All right, the first most obvious price of a greenhouse has to be the kit itself. And you might think that that is all you're going to pay for, but it's not. The greenhouse kit is one of, you're going to hear, many different components that actually come into play when you're pricing out your entire greenhouse. So this kit was 33 or 34 hundred dollars in Canadian so you can convert that it'd be a little bit less than US dollars and it's a 10 by 20 and I would call this like a mid-range greenhouse I've seen greenhouses for a lot less I bought a greenhouse that was just a few hundred dollars a number of years ago now did not work out well ended up in the landfill total waste of money so I definitely wanted to go up in price um, so I went for like a mid-range greenhouse they can go as high as like eight nine thousand dollars even twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars um, greenhouses can really vary in range. So that would be the first cost that you want to consider. Then, when you factored in shipping and tax, um, the shipping itself, I ended up buying from a company that wasn't too far away from me. So it ended up costing, I think, two hundred and seventy-five dollars. I'm going to have all these prices probably on the screen, but also in the blog post for sure. But like two hundred and seventy-five, three hundred dollars for shipping, which was pretty low. I was looking at greenhouses before this, before I decided on this one, I was looking at higher end greenhouses and one specifically made out of glass. It was a lot nicer looking than the one that I bought, but it was also double the price. So I went with the less expensive one, but the glass greenhouse would have also cost a lot more to ship. So you think about like the weight, right? Shipping is usually accounted by weight. Um, so a glass greenhouse of this size would have cost close to eight, nine hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars or so for that to be shipped. Next up is the base of the greenhouse. Now this was a huge extra hidden cost that I had not accounted for. So I chose to make my base out of wood. Now, if you're wondering why, what a base is for, um, it essentially it like holds the greenhouse in place, it keeps it level, and it prevents it from shifting a little bit over time with just the natural freeze thaw cycle of soil. So the base helps with all of those different things. And I choose to make mine out of wood. So this is six by six cedar wood. So cedar obviously costs a lot more, or really obviously, but cedar does cost more than like regular um, wood you'd get like to build framing for a house kind of thing because cedar doesn't rot. So I chose to use cedar wood six by sixes. So that was a huge additional cost to my overall greenhouse itself. Now I did, I did the, the base myself kind of. I did a little bit DIY and I actually brought someone in um, in the end because, um, and sorry, one more thing with the with the base. I actually used, I just folded this back a little bit. This down here is, um, it's like a crushed stone and this crushed stone helps to level the base and it's not going to shift the same way that like soil would. So if I just stuck this wood on top of soil, for example, it could still shift. Now it wouldn't be as likely, but I chose to use this crushed stone. It kind of acts like cement when it's really packed down. So this was my choice um, for the base. You could go with concrete, which would be even more expensive, um, but some sort of base is gonna help at least a greenhouse of this size maintain its integrity over the years. So I choose to spend a little bit more up front to keep like a strong greenhouse for a number of years instead of it potentially shifting and things start to fall out of place in a few years. I didn't want that to happen. So um, so the base itself was definitely an added cost. And I did, um, I ended up doing this partly DIY and I ended up partly hiring um, someone to help me. And the reason I ended up hiring someone to help me was because I, I brought in a contractor. So I knew the guy and he, um, he ended up doing some work for us on a renovation a number of years ago. So he came, I was nice. I could pay him by the hour. So it was really easy. But he ended up, like, he had all the tools to make sure it was level, to make sure it was square. But I did all of the digging. Well, my husband helped. <laughs> but we, as homeowners, did, like, the digging of the trench. We um, put down all the rock. We laid down, we got the, the wood delivered ourselves. Um, so it was pretty DIY for this part of it. I did get a quote, though, for someone to come in and actually do this part for us. And if I asked someone to do the base, the exact same base that I put here, 
it would have cost $1,800 for someone to come and do this base for me. All in all, I actually think that's, that's a pretty good deal. And I think that would have been on the low end of if I had got a lot of different quotes on that. So $1,800 if you want someone to come and do your base for you. Otherwise, you're paying in sweat equity to do it yourself. All right, next up is the assembly of the kit. Now, the assembly, of course, you can do it yourself. And we ended up doing, again, a hybrid of DIY. And um, we also brought that same contractor back. The kit itself was a challenge to assemble. There's no question about it. And I am pretty good at following instructions and assembling things. Like I've done three Ikea kitchens all pretty much by myself. Most of the furniture in my house comes from a kit and I, I have assembled it myself. So I'm pretty good with instructions and kits, but I did find this greenhouse to be a challenge. I don't think it was necessarily written as well as it could have been, but it was also a complicated structure to build. So it took us a long time my husband helped, again, grudgingly helped me out with this, but I could have done um, some of it myself. You need more than one person to assemble a greenhouse. Um, so we did a lot of it ourselves and it took a number of weeks. Um, I again ended up bringing in that same contractor to help with the actual polycarbonate part of this, which I thought was gonna be the easiest part of this whole build, it was not. So we brought him in to help with that because we were pretty much fed up by that point <laughs> and we needed some help. So we brought him in and he, uh, he helped with that as well. So I ended up paying a couple hundred dollars for him to come just for an afternoon to help me with some of the hard, actually he came twice. So it would have been, yeah, like three or $400 for him to come um, to help with the actual assembly of this and to put the greenhouse kit onto the base. That took three of us. That took myself, my husband, and the contractor to move the actual kit onto the base itself. So you need either very, um, you, you yourself or someone you know needs to be pretty handy or you need to be paying for people to do this. Now, I have to say though, I also got a quote on this one. So I asked the greenhouse supplier who I bought this greenhouse from how much it would have cost if they would come and install it for me because I know that not everyone knows how to build a greenhouse. So I said, you know, what would it cost for you guys to just come and build this? Now they said it would cost them $1,500 to put together this size of greenhouse. So it's a 10 by 20 greenhouse and they would put it onto the base for me. So all in all, that is also a really good price. That seemed kind of high to me when I first heard the price, but afterwards I actually think I would have paid that $1,500 because it was a crazy amount of work. Like it took a month probably from the time I got this greenhouse to the time I actually got it assembled. It could have even been more than that. So it was just I, not a month of working every single day, but you know, just cause I needed a break <laughs> from working on it in between. So that included like the base and all the stuff that, you know, that I'm going to keep talking about. But um, yeah, $1,500 if you wanted to have someone do it for you. If you're not super handy and you don't have handy people around you, then I strongly recommend asking either a local, someone local to you who does, like who actually builds greenhouses or the supplier themselves to see if they can recommend someone for you if you don't want to do it yourself because it was not fun. And then there were some other sort of unexpected costs that came with it. Like I needed to buy brackets to hold the base together. I needed to buy um, additional L brackets and screws and stuff like that to attach the base to the, to the kit. That didn't come with the kit. I also ended up buying different screws <laughs> by the time we got to it, by the time actually I brought the contractor in and I asked him to help with the assembly of the, of the actual panels of the plastic part that goes over top of the frame. He was like, these screws are way too short for this job. So we ended up buying some extra screws just to make the whole thing a whole lot easier. And that made it actually not as painful to do the plastic part of it. But it, yeah, so I ended up spend, spending probably about $100, $150 maybe on all that stuff. And then the other thing I bought was tape. So with polycarbonate, you need to tape, you need to tape the edges so that insects and water and stuff like that doesn't actually fall into the plastic itself because it's, the plastic's like grooves. So it's inside of it, you could literally pour water from one side and it would come out the other. So they ask you to seal it shut, no matter where you're going to buy your polycarbonate from. You're, either they would seal it or you would seal it. And it didn't come with enough, so I had to buy some. But I ended up buying greenhouse-specific tape because I wanted to get the right stuff. It actually ended up being awesome, the stuff that I bought. It was about $30 or $40. I ended up sealing the panels together, which actually ended up working out in my favor because we had a really big windstorm the day after I installed this greenhouse. And the one I didn't do this on 
snapped out of place. So I think that's probably a flaw in the design or perhaps in our workmanship, but I am definitely going to go back and put tape on that one piece that I didn't apply it to, and we'll see how that goes um, with our next windstorm, because we get crazy windstorms around here, like 100 kilometer or 60 mile an hour winds we get around here. It's really frustrating. <laughs> And then the last in the sort of mandatory category, I haven't even got into the other stuff that I'm going to keep going into, like other things that you're going to want in this greenhouse, like what I'm sitting on right here. Um, but the last of sort of what I deem like the mandatory things to be able to actually put together a kit is possibly a permit. And you might be surprised, but you do need a permit a lot of the time for a greenhouse. So you're going to have to check. I mean, every single city municipality is going to be different. And you'll, you're going to need to do your research to see if you're going to need a permit in your area. Around here, it's, I think it's 120 or 110 square feet. So a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 20 or something like that greenhouse would require a permit. This is a 10 by 20, so it's 200 square feet. So I definitely needed a permit. And that is a huge headache. Oh my gosh, dealing with the city. <laughs> so, um... That, you know, we count on 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Obviously, every city is going to be different, but that's going to be an extra cost as well. So you can see already, I am already, if I had paid people to do some of this work for me, like if I had paid someone to do the base, if I had paid someone to actually put together the frame, all the extra sort of things I had to buy, all of that is already double the price of my kit. I've already spent more. I know I didn't, I did some of this DIY, but if I had done that, I would have already been spending more than double the price of the actual kit itself. I'm just going to pause here and say that you do not need a greenhouse to be able to grow food in the winter. That is a huge actual misconception that a lot of people think that you have to have a greenhouse in order to have a winter garden. So I, you know, I certainly thought that when I was getting started and you might be thinking that too by watching this video that, okay, I want to grow food in the winter. I want to have a winter garden. So what does it cost? How much does it cost for me to have a greenhouse? But I just want to let you know before I keep going that you don't need a greenhouse. There are plenty of other ways that you can be extending your gardening season without a greenhouse. Um, just wanted to pause before I keep going with the cost before you're like, uh, this is totally out of my budget or I just don't want to be spending that kind of money right now, um, that there are other options besides just a greenhouse. All right, now let's get into some of the optional costs that you might very well want to spend when you get a greenhouse because Part of what's cool about a greenhouse is that you can do, you can put in here anything you want. It's like a little room outside, right? Now, if you choose to grow directly in the soil, you could potentially be done here. If you're just going to use the native soil, whatever soil you have growing, and just put your plants right in there, you theoretically could be done. You might not need any additional costs. I, however, wanted to have raised beds. So I chose to put raised beds in my greenhouse, and you can see they are very deep. You don't need raised beds this deep. Like, this is totally just because I wanted it. <laughs> you need, like, two, or one even, <laughs> would be fine, but probably two of these for a, a decent amount of growing soil. Um, and I chose to do five. I So this is a lot of cedar. I had to buy five layers deep. I also have four by fours to secure it. I have two by fours to hold um, the middle together. I have two by two, so there's a lot of wood here. Now I have two of these beds, and each of them are about nine feet wide. So nine by, I think, three, three or so wide. This is a lot of wood, and I don't even have the top. I, I'm planning on putting a framing on top of this as well. Now, you could obviously do this a lot cheaper. If you don't want to buy cedar, it will be less expensive. If you do it shallower it will definitely be less expensive but count on some investment for some sort of raised beds if that's what you're planning on doing then you're going to need to fill your raised beds with soil because this is the fall or it was the fall when i originally installed this greenhouse i had a lot of native soil and native plants and things like that that i could fill these beds with because this is a crazy amount of soil this easily would have cost me several hundred dollars if i had just got a soil delivery to fill these beds and I chose to use some um, like leaves. I choose to use just um, uh, tall grasses that I cut down every year, things like that to bulk it up from the bottom. I also had some just soil lying around and then I ended up buying triple mix to put on top. So I did end up spending a little money on the soil, but I didn't fill this whole bed with purchased soil. So count on spending some money on the raised bed materials plus the soil itself if you decide you want to put raised beds. Now, I also chose to make this a very multi 
purpose room. I chose to put in a stand with lights so that I can get a kickstart on my growing season inside my greenhouse. Now, I had this inside before, so I didn't buy this. I had this stand for a number of years. I had these lights for a number of years. This is like my indoor growing station. I also then, to make this work, needed electricity in here. So I had an electrician bring in power from the side of my house underneath and ha actually have a power source inside of my greenhouse. I knew a guy, so it was really not very expensive for me. I only paid $100 for him to come and put this power source in here. If I had to pay for an electrician that I didn't know to do that, I mean, I can't bring any sort of expert like that into my home, like a plumber. I don't think they ever come for less than $200, $250. So I don't know what the going rate is for an electrician that you don't know, but I did know him, so it was only $100. But I would say probably count on closer to $200 and $250 if you're gonna bring in an electrician, if you want power as well in your greenhouse. And then I did put landscape fabric below as well so that it wasn't so muddy in here because when you think about like mud or just exposed soil in the winter in the damp weather, it gets really sloppy. So I wanted to put some landscape fabric down. I ended up buying this from a awesome company that I buy a lot of like commercial quality uh, growing equipment from. So this is really nice fabric, I love it. And I also, I haven't finished, but I have these rocks that I'm going to put as a base as well below just to make it a little bit nicer to walk on, a little bit nicer aesthetics in here. But um, so the fabric itself was about $100 and the rocks delivered were around $250. Now I'm going to have more rocks than I need, I think, for this greenhouse. So I'm actually going to create a little path from the house into the greenhouse. And I'll just use the rest of the landscape fabric and the rocks for that purpose. But I still see that as kind of an extension of the greenhouse. So that's an optional cost, of course. But those two things together cost several hundred dollars that I didn't necessarily think about spending when I was first starting. And then, of course, the plants, right? So I actually got all of these garden these plants from my own garden. I've been growing out so outside in the winter for many years without a greenhouse. And it's absolutely possible to do this. So I had a lot of plants already growing that I was kind of growing extras just because I knew that I was going to put them in this greenhouse. So I just transplanted a lot of these from my own outside garden. But if you didn't already have them growing, then of course you'd either need to be growing your plants or buying your plants. So I would count on, I mean, it could be anywhere from a couple dollars if you're just buying seeds and you're going to grow everything from seed to several hundred or even a thousand dollars or more if you're buying all of your plants from a greenhouse supplier, or a, a nursery or um, a garden center or something like that, you know, plants, each plant could cost a few dollars if you're spending it, if you're going to buy it from a supplier. Now, another optional cost that you might want to consider are windows. And this greenhouse didn't come with any windows. Well, I mean, it came with some windows on the doors, but you have to open them manually. And I wanted automatic, automatic windows. I wanted windows that would open and close all by themselves that uh, so I didn't have to come in and vent my greenhouse. You do need to vent it. You need to ha allow for some air circulation. Otherwise, it can actually get really hot in there. Like you can cook your plants if it gets too hot. So I choose to buy two automated automatic windows and those two windows cost me $230. Haven't installed them yet, but um, I'm gonna be doing that very shortly. Just didn't get it done <laughs> for this video. But uh, an extra $230 if you do want a couple automatic windows. So this greenhouse kit, which had a sticker price of $3,300, cost me over $8,000 when I was all said and done. And could have very $7,000 if I hadn't done some of the work as DIY myself. So it's very important to think about all these other things when you're factoring in what the actual greenhouse cost is. It's not just the sticker price of the greenhouse, it's all these other things that are all combined. Now, I'm not saying this to discourage you. I absolutely think that a greenhouse is an awesome investment if it's the right thing for you. But it's also really important to understand that if you want to buy a kit and you are not super handy and you're not going to build the greenhouse yourself, because I know that you can do this a lot cheaper for sure. I know there's lots of YouTubers that do like DIY greenhouses. That is not me. <laughs> I wanted a kit. I wanted to for sure make sure that the structure, the integrity was solid. Um, so I chose to buy a greenhouse kit and I paid for that 
for that convenience and I paid for the expertise of the company, of the manufacturer, the engineers that all designed this greenhouse. So could it have been less? Of course, it, you can definitely build a greenhouse for much less if you wanna do it DIY, but I wanted to give you the price of the kit. And like I said, you do not need a greenhouse to grow food in the winter. It is totally not mandatory. I've been growing food in winter. I had a winter garden for years before I had a greenhouse and I've been doing just fine. The greenhouse is obviously a nice upgrade. It certainly keeps me nice and toasty in the winter as well as my plants. So um, I mentioned this, but you can go down in the description. There's gonna be more resources for you on growing food in the winter if you wanna check it out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video for more winter gardening tips.